On round two today, what a pleasure to say good morning in person to George Decay. Nice to see you, George. Good morning. You've been a guest on the show many times by phone, but this time we get you in the flesh. I'm here in the flesh. There we go, with that incredible <laughs> voice. That is, uh, well, I mean, it's been your voice all your life, so I guess it's you're raw t- uh, this morning. You, you're a little tired? Uh, I had a speech to make. Uh, at uh, Pride Toronto, but that was followed by two hours of autographing and posing for... Really? For selfies. You could pull a Ringo Starr and tell him to F off. is now torn to bits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nuts. Well, you sound good. Mathieu Chantelois is here. Uh, official title, I, I would call you Grand Pooba, but are you the CEO of Pride? <laughs> Executive Director, what are you? I'm the Pride Minister. The Pride <laughs> Minister. <laughs> okay. No, I'm not. I'm the Executive Director. And by the way... George was amazing last night. You missed a really, really nice lecture. I was still in transit, so I'm sorry I missed that. Mandy Goodhandy is here. You've heard Mandy on the show before, uh, also known as Amanda Taylor. Nice to see you again. Thank you, John. Always you're, a pleasure. You're singing at the Jazz Festival. I will be. I will be the first Canadian trans woman to be um, accepted into the Jazz Festival, and I'll be singing at 120 Diner. That's uh, 120 Church Street, just um, south of Richmond. And between 9 and 11 this Friday night. All right. Well, we'll make sure people know about that. Um, let me start with uh, with you, George. And you've been, you're all over Twitter. And you have how many followers now? Do you know? About almost uh, 10 million. 9.7 million <laughs> followers. Incredible. You've been very, very vocal and very articulate in the wake of the Orlando shootings. This weekend, I was reading in the New York Times that the FBI investigation suggests that the gunman was not gay, and a lot of people thought he might be gay. Does it make a difference if the killer of 49 people in a gay nightclub is gay? He targeted the gay community. It, well, what it was was an assault not only on the gay community, but on the First Amendment of the uh, United States Bill of Rights. Part of the First Amendment is the right to assembly and the right to association. It was an assembly of LGBT people celebrating the weekend, dancing and and having a great time as who they are. That was what was targeted, this, uh, the right to assembly. The other mass killings uh, in Charleston was African-American churchgoers, again, a common group, uh, Newtown, five-year-olds, six-years-old, children, going to first grade, were uh, targeted. Right. Gabby Giffords, a a former congresswoman in uh, Tucson, Town hall meeting. People that were interested in the uh, local politics were gathered. Okay, so So, what's the issue? Is it the guns? Is it crazy people? What? It's an assault on the First First Amendment. But even some of the bedrock uh, uh, democratic uh, issues, like rights as uh, the freedom of speech, has restraints on it. We can't yell fire in a crowded theater. I can't slander people recklessly. There, there'll be consequences because of the damage being done by that, that kind of irresponsibility. But there is no such restraint on the Second Amendment. People who are denied boarding an airplane, people who are on watch that would be me. can go out and buy assault weapons. I call them weapons of mass destruction. There's got to be sensible, rational restraints on every one of our Bill of Rights. And that's the issue here. Mathieu, you were very articulate and very passionate the morning after the the Orlando shootings. I wonder, for you, does it... uh, Because I think it says a lot about the gay community and the straight community, the struggle over whether or not the gunman was gay. Um, For me, really, it doesn't change much because at the end of the day, uh, we lost 49 members of our community. We lost 49 brothers and sisters, and blood is blood, right? So the person that was a killer, uh, most of all, had serious mental health problem, and that's extremely sad. Uh, The sexual orientation is this for me makes no difference because the result is the same so so i don't even yeah. want to know if he was gay or not i want to know are we going to fix these kinds of problems i want to know how are we going to feel comfortable in our own clubs uh, in our own skin i want to know when we're going to be able to walk in the street and don't feel like we are doing anything wrong because we hold the end of our partner i want to know if we can work better with our trans community as well to make them visible everywhere i want to know if we can work with our black community to make him feel better that's the kind of questions that i think we need to ask and 
the shooting was a horrible thing, but it brought all of us together in a way where now we are having this conversation and uh, now we are fighting to make the world a better place. And that includes working on gun control in the States. I think we have a voice in Canada in this, and I think that we have to lead this fight because when our community leads a fight, we win. You mentioned trans issues. Let me ask you, Mandy Goodhandy. Um, it's only been in the last couple of years people have really talked more about the trans community. A lot of that has to do with Caitlyn Jenner being this public uh, celebrity and a trans person. <clears throat> but I wonder if maybe there is sort of a false sense of community sometimes. If, you know, the gay community can say that it's all people, you know, all things to all people. You have the rainbow flag, but there is discrimination in the gay community. There are There is racism, there is ageism, and I don't know how accepted trans people feel. Or trans people, you mean trans people amongst themselves? Or no, amongst... Like being in, viewed from the outside? As members of the gay community. Yeah, I think... Um, I ha I probably have a tougher time going to a gay bar than I do a heterosexual bar, to be honest with you. I don't feel all that welcome in, in a gay bar as a trans woman. I, I don't know why some of them react and, and act the way they do, um, but they do, and it's unfortunate. But um, with the heterosexual community, and until they know you're trans, there really isn't any reaction. Um, I do the comedy circuit, as you know, John, and I'm in, um, if you want to call it straight bars, all the time performing. And the acceptance is actually quite amazing. And I think it's because I'm educating them more on, a tr on trans people and using humor to do it. And once you use humor, people relax a little more. Uh, because a lot of the times they're seeing us being serious, which they should because there's a lot of issues involved. But also we can be funny too and we can be fun as well. And so people have to see that. But there's still a lot of hatred and misunderstanding. With the shooting um, with the shooting in Orlando, I know you didn't ask me this directly, but I find a lot of the times that people who are doing this hate, okay, this killing, are people who actually hate themselves. But from what I find, overall, they're self-haters, it seems. Most of the women, uh, uh, trans women and trans men that have been murdered so far, for example, it's all been done by people who are freaked out because they either claim they did not know that that was a man or that was a woman or they did not know, and so it's okay to kill us. Yeah, it's like the crying game. Yes, exactly. But yeah. only, yeah, it's that type of a thing. It's like, so they think it's okay. And that's where the, the problem comes in. It's not okay. And why are they thinking it's okay? Because we're different. So they figure they can just kill us. And, and the killings that are done on trans women and trans men are very intimate, which is very odd. It's strangulation, shooting in the face. It's beatings. A lot of the times it's groups of people beating up on the trans people because they feel it's okay because you're freaks. And once we get past that, when people start understanding, we're not freaks. We're like everybody else, and we're just living our life. Don't ask us why we feel the way we do. You can't ask that because we don't know the answer to that. Eventually, maybe science will figure that out. Who knows? Okay. George, uh, you actually were pictured um, in promoting this segment with a T-shirt that says, you can pee next to me. I mean, what do you make of this whole issue, which obviously, to my read anyway, the transgender bathroom issue is sort of the last trench that people who don't like minority, you know, sexual minorities can retreat to and think that they still sound sensible. This is, uh, the bathroom issue is a manufactured issue by reactionary politicians. They've, you know, that segment of the community, of the national community, is now feeling uh, like they're losing because we've won issue after issue. And they're trying to now strike back by creating issues where issues don't exist. I mean, this whole bathroom issue is preposterous. It's ridiculous. It's laughable. I mean, can you uh, imagine Caitlyn Jenner dressed as she is walking into the men's room? I mean, they say it's for this, the protection of little girls that uh, they, uh, people have to go into the bathroom of, the, of their gender identity. So... Uh, Chaz Bono has to go into the women's room. I mean, it's 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 uh, ridiculous. They use ads like uh, ankles being seen uh, uh, un, uh, from the uh, the, uh, the stall from the bathroom stall, and yeah. showing little girl in Mary Jane's ankles. 
and combat boots right next to it. That's ridiculous. That's preposterous. It's politicians who want to now react against that. It is, uh, it's going to die a proper death. It's important for us all, you know, especially when uh, there's discussion of uh, uh, division and dissent amongst the LGBT community. The seminal event for this uh, LGBT uh, equality movement began in 1969 with Stonewall. And the fiercest fighter at Stonewall were what we call drag queens at that time, trans people. They were the fiercest, most intense resistors to the raid that happened there. We have common ground, and all this uh, searching of division and, uh, and conflict is uh, something that's going to be self-defeating. We've got to recognize that we're all in this together and fighting for equality for all of us, uh, LGBT people, as a community. And Mathieu, people will, as things get better and better for minority, sexual minority communities, will say, why do you still need pride? <laughs> Uh, f first, this month, the answer is really easy, be, uh, thanks to, uh, if I can say that, thanks to what happened in Orlando, right? Uh, because at the beginning of the month, people were asking the question, why do you need a full month? And it's a fair question. But at the end of the day, we're not closing all the streets and blocking all the traffic for a full month. What we do is we offer with all the cultural institutions, with the LGBT groups, with the grassroots organization, a day in the month where they can shine, where they can own the conversation, where they can do something that is meaningful, where we send a message to Torontonians, to the uh, country, to the world, maybe. Uh, and that's exactly what we did last night by having uh, George Take coming to talk to us, right? These messages are important. So uh, so th that's why we need a Pride Month. And why we still need Pride? We need Pride because too many people forget the T and the LGBT. And we need to tell our trans folks that uh, we know them, we see that they're them, we don't want to forget about them, we stand next to them, we love them. We need pride because 